Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of our Deadly 7 educational YouTube series, where we break down the details and histories of the most prominent demons shown or simply mentioned in the show Hell of a Boss, as well as Hasman Hotel by Vivzy Pop. In the previous videos we talked about Asmodeus, the embodiment of lust, as well as Lucifer, the king of hell and embodiment of pride, so it makes sense, I think, that we get down and detailed on the embodiment of gluttony himself, Beelzebub. Some real world details to go over before anything else. Beelzebub comes from a mix of the ancient religions that worshipped him as a god, but was later adopted by the Abrahamic faiths as a demon. In the Dictionnaire Infernali, Beelzebub is known as the Lord of Flyers, because he has wings that can fly as well as the Lord of the Flies, though as far as we can tell there is no reason for him to be associated to the insect known as the Housefly. According to Peter Binsfield, who was a very influential witch hunter during the 1500s, Beelzebub was the chief cook of hell, though that's kinda crazy because what are they gonna eat down there? Rocks? Anyway, in the lore of the world we currently reside in, Beelzebub is another name for Satan, but we're all agreeing that people getting confused with names was to be expected, and not think too hard into it. Satan is in charge of wrath, Asmodeus is in charge of lust, Lucifer manages pride, Leviathan manages envy, Beelzebub works with food, and Belphegor leads with doing nothing all day and feeling exhausted about it. So why all the confusion? Well, that's because it's been almost 4,000 years since these names began to pop up in various forms, and all over the place there's people trying to be the ones to be right, while everyone else was wrong. This is also known as philosophy. In the has -been Hotel universe, though, we see little details regarding the appearance of Beelzebub, what he or she does, and what they are up to. We do get a single little tidbit of information, because during the first half of the season 1 finale, aka episode 7, Aussies, Moxie sings to Millie about how he loves her to bits and will do anything to be with her. He talks about how he loves her like the way fire loves the brimstone, or is it brimstone loves the fire? But, but most importantly, he also talks about how Biesel loves her bub. Well, let's get a clip of that, yeah? More than the Elsa loves her bub. Freaky. So we might get a confirmation here that not only might Beelzebub be a dual entity comprised of two individuals, but Biezo could be a female. This would be the first instance of a leading character like that being female, as the obvious choice would have been to make Asmodeus a woman, though with a voice like that it'd be a shame not to get him to sing with gusto and passion. Besides, it's an overplayed stereotype, so kudos on the team for coming up with something new for the shtick. Who is Biesel, and who is her bub? Is it a play on words? At the very least, we know for a fact that Biesel loves her bub, so maybe it's Moxie being cute while inadvertently making fun of one of the Deadly Seven. I'd say he's done crazier things before, but that was Millie, and she only stomped on Asmodeus's Fizzerali. She didn't attack the big man himself. What does this tell us about the hierarchy of the Deadly Seven? Well, we talked about Lucifer being in charge because he is, according to Vivzipop, the king of hell itself. It's safe to assume that among the Deadly Seven, how we refer to the Deadly Seven since here, there is a sense of camaraderie. Then again, they are very influential demons, capable of standing up for themselves, yet ultimately paying fealty to Lucifer, because Lucifer, as we talked about in the previous episode, has things that demons can only imagine due to his angelic heritage. Makes one wonder about Charlie, eh? Anyway, back to lore. Beelzebub is associated with the most intense case of witch trials in recent history, a fact that some of you may know simply because of the notoriety it has. Perhaps you have heard of this quaint little town in the state of Massachusetts? Salem? Yes, we're talking about the Salem Witch Trials. During the trials, there was all sorts of nonsense flung about. Demon possession, spells, magic, people were accusing one another of being witches and warlocks, and overall, it was a prime example of mass hysteria impacting society of a comparatively primitive nature. Compared to what we have now, anyway. 
the name that was most spoken of during the confessions of the witches and warlocks was that of Beelzebub, who commanded them to do all sorts of nonsense. Some demonologists would disagree with this following tidbit, but according to some sources, Lucifer wasn't the only high-ranking angel that was cast down. According to them, Beelzebub and Leviathan were there with him, but until otherwise stated by Vivzi, that's being kept under wraps. So what powers does Beelzebub have? Is she capable of doing stuff like Lucifer or Asmodeus? To be fair, we have seen precious little of the bigger players. So far, our only point of reference has been Stolas, and now with Episode 7 out, Asmodeus. It's fair to point out the following. The Deadly Seven are in charge of a ring of hell for themselves. Asmodeus is in charge of lust, Satan is in charge of wrath, etc, etc. So where does Beelzebub fall into? Some would say that the obvious answer is gluttony, but we actually know nothing about that portion. Or at least, we know precious little. So let's recap what we know so far after this little message. Be sure to subscribe and like the video. If you want to point out something that we missed or comment what your favorite thing was, you know where to go. With that done, let's see what we know so far. From the show and episodes therein, we see that Beelzebub is one of the Deadly Seven with Asmodeus and Lucifer. We know she's in charge of the Ring of Gluttony, but aside from that, there's nothing else to give us hints in the show. So, what else are we to do? I know, let's theorycraft. The idea is that gluttony is the deadly sin of overindulgence of anything. The common attribution of that is that it relates to food, but you can be a glutton for punishment, which implies that for some reason you're wanting or even needing to get punishment done. If so, go down to the Lust Ring. I'm sure Asmodeus would love to chat with you. Meanwhile, food isn't the only thing people indulge in to excess. In a sense, each sin can be expressed in the guise of the rest by adjusting a few elements here and there. For example, with gluttony being the overindulgence of something to the point of waste, lust can be considered the overindulgence of something to the point of obsession. Wrath is the overindulgence on anger, etc, etc. As a matter of fact, gluttony used to be such a serious sin in the Middle Ages that a few church leaders of the time condemned it. Thomas Aquinas went so far as to add to it the idea of anticipation. Not only was it bad now to eat your food to the point of waste, but looking forward to doing so was also a big no-no. He classified gluttons in five categories and, you guessed it, we're gonna go into the details. Basically, it was a sin of gluttony to eat something if you did it expensively, daintily, in excess, quickly, or just plain eagerly. God, it seems you can't eat anything without falling into one of those categories here. Wipe your mouth with a napkin? I guess you're a studios type of glutton. Treat yourself to some lobster and caviar? Guess you're that lout kind of glutton. It is a never-ending cycle of sins here, which might explain why hell is so full of people, actually. Demons and devils need to eat, too. We've seen that before, and Angel Dust himself also commented on the fact that maybe Charlie should get some groceries done for all the people in that hotel. Not nice, Angel. Not nice at all. But the implication that demons need to eat also means that, well, what happens if they can't eat? We saw in episode 5, The Harvest Moon, that there is a harvest in the Ring of Wrath, so... Do demons need food? What happens if they go hungry? Even Stolas needs to eat. He's seen there eating some... Are, are those potatoes? Is that corn? Why do demons need to eat? Are sinners from Earth that go down to hell forced to also eat and survive? Why do some imps look like demons, and why do some demons look like imps? Where did Stryker get a sniper rifle that was designed to kill demonic royalty like Stolas? Did an angel drop it? Seems unlikely, as the angels are seen using mainly spears, and such though their faces have a weirdly techy vibe going on, as if they are screens. Are angels even real? Do they stem from cherubs? What's going on here? Bivzy Pop, what are the answers to my questions? Why does Hell have a full-on ring entirely devoted to hillbillies and ranchers? What is the purpose of this? 
Do they have a deal with the Ring of Gluttony and that's why the imps work so hard? Is Satan in cahoots with Beelzebub? What's their deal? What is going on? Beelzebub is in charge of Gluttony, which means that there is a ring dedicated entirely to food and all that stuff. Maybe it's full of snobbish pricks that drink wine and eat food by the shovel and complain about stuff? Is the Ring of Envy owned by Leviathan an ocean? Blitz said that the nearest ocean to where they were at was three rings down, so does that mean that fish are also a commodity people buy to eat? Is sushi a thing in hell? Every question can be a video here, so let's be honest, y'all are stuck in this limbo of realization, learning and questioning until I get to the bottom of this. I blame Beelzebub for this too. If the Wrath Ring is full of hillbillies and farmers, maybe Satan is some big shot exporter of goods, which would make sense considering the fact that food is the thing people need here in hell. Mammon would totally want in on that action because he is the dude of greed. Maybe Beelzebub is the one that knows how to cook all that stuff? So help me, if Beelzebub is shown to be a kindly duo of demonic kings known as Beazel and Bub that turn out to be total cannibalistic dicks, I am going to go and shriek into the mountains. Lucifer would let them deal with that because he is high above them and as long as food is had, Asmodeus can deal with lust. The only one left is Leviathan who, due to his envious nature, would also want in on the action. Belphegor... Well, Belphegor does nothing, so that's already asking enough of him. Thanks for watching this insane ranting video full to the brim of theorycraft. Feel free to subscribe and like this video. Is there anything we should focus on? Any details we missed? Tune in next time to learn a little bit about Satan, the embodiment of wrath.